Welcome back to Coding Shorts. My name is Sean Wildermuth. I just released a new course on Pluralsight about JavaScript modules. And in making that course, I learned quite a lot. What we're gonna to do today is talk about some of the surprising things I learned about specifically ECMAScript modules. Let's get started. So we're starting with a really simple project here. Uh, it's all actually in two JavaScript files, and we're running it in Node, though when you're using ECMAScript across different ecosystems, like SPA projects, for example, you're going to see some of these same things be applicable. But we are talking about Node at the moment. What this does is effectively has a list of invoices, has some tax rates for certain states, and down here, uh, run through each of the invoice, and we're going to calculate the total based on the rate, and then return that so that I can then spit it out. And if we open up a console real quick and we run this, we're going to get this pretty simple solution, right? Invoice number, date, the gross is that much, the tax rate is that, and we have a net here of what the total is after the taxes. And we're going to want to clean this up a little and refactor it so that it's a little easier to manage. Having it all in this one file might seem useful, but it's not really what we need. So I'm going to start by deleting all our invoices here, right? We have five of them because we actually have a pretty big sample here of 200 invoices that we're going to use instead. And in order to use it, again, this is CommonJS because we're a node, we're going to have to say module.exports and assign it to our big object here so that back here we can go ahead and bring in our invoices by using require, right? And so now that we're getting the large number, we should be able to just see that when we run this again, there's actually a ton of these in here. As you can see from the scroll bar, there's tons of them, but we're not gonna worry about each individual one right now. So, so I'm more interested because I'm so used to ESM or ECMAScript modules inside of other JavaScript projects or even TypeScript projects that I'm using. I'd love to be able to use that here in Node. And so there's some interesting things about Node support for ECMAScript. The first thing they allow you to do is actually change the file names to M and they suddenly become valid ECMAScript, right? So export default this object, right? This is st the style is specifically around ESM or ECMAScript modules. And because we renamed this as well, we'll need to change this to say Im import from our same file, right? And so we're now using bare bones, barely any. We are using this modularity, so we can say index MJS, and it's all gonna work with ECMAScript. But I don't like the idea of renaming these. Uh, you can actually also support renaming these to CJS to imply that they're common JS. But I'm just gonna go back to regular JS files because one of the things we can do here is in the packages, we can actually say what kind of module we want to use. If you look here, CommonJS and module are the two different types. And CommonJS is the default. When this type is omitted, it's going to be CommonJS, just like we always thought, right? But if we change this to module, it will suddenly treat all files as modules as well. And that's really the sort of interesting thing here, is now that we have... these as .js and we've changed the package here, ECMAScript just works here. And that's great. I didn't realize until recently that we can use ECMAScript modules in this way. And so let's refactor this into something more obvious. So I'm going to grab these taxes and I'm going to let Visual Studio Code move this to a new file for me. And when I do that, it forgets to put the .js, which is required in Node because of the CJS, MJS, .js system. And we can see here that we've imported it. And what has it done here? It's just exported it as a named member, not as default, but named member. We could change that. And we can do the same thing with calculate total to bring that to a new file. 
And one of the things you might notice is it brought in the calculate total here, but it got rid of the introduction of the rate because one of the reasons for using this modularity is that when we look at something like the calculate total, this tax rate is only used inside of this function we're exporting. So there's no reason for index.js to need that rates anymore. We're pulling out the rate based on the information we have. And now that we have this broken up into individual smaller pieces, you should be not surprised at all. And if we make sure that it's JS again, it's the only part of the refactoring I'm not in love with, is that we can just say npm start still works now that we've broken into all these pieces. So the idea of being able to work with ECMAScript modules directly here in the project, I find really interesting. But of course, if we're a node, one of the other things I learned is that you can still use common JS imported objects. They actually have sort of a shim that allows you to do that. And the reason you want that is because much of NPM packages are all common JS derived. And so we have a package we've actually included here called Lodash that I'm going to use here to round these numbers. So I'm going to say round comma two. That's a function I, I'm going to use directly from Lodash. So I could do this in other ways, but it's a nice excuse to be able to look at Lodash. And so how are we going to import it? We're going to say import round from Lodash, right? This is an NPM package, not a file in our local system. And it's just going to make the right decision about what we're, we need to do there, right? And if we run this again, we're going to get an error. And we're going to get an error that's going to really tell us about this. And that is named imports don't really work when you're importing from ECMAScript modules using a package that is using CommonJS. And so what they really want you to do here is not use name. So let's just get that whole object here. And then we can, of course, destructure it ourselves. Or you could use lodash.round in this case. Either of those should work. And so if we run it again, we can now see that the roundings are happening, right? I'm not forcing it to have all the zeros if we don't need all the zeros, but you can see pretty clearly that the roundings are actually working. And it looks like I forgot to put a comma two here because none of the nets had a. So let's start it again. And now that I've done it right, we can see here they're all using this round and that's great. So we have a way to work with pretty much any NPM package, even if it's common JS directly in our project. And we get that nice error when that happens. And this is again, something I wasn't aware of. The last thing I wanna talk about is something that I've been working with ECMAScript modules for a long time, but I've never used the import function. I wasn't even aware that it was a thing, but let's say that we want to defer or dynamically load these tax rates the first time this calculate total is loaded. And so what we can do is we can say const tax rate from import. Now notice I'm using the import function here. Now, this looks like it would work, but it's actually asynchronous. In order to do this import, we have to wait for a call. This could be across the network, into the file system, whatever it is. So we're going to go ahead and make this an async function and an await here so that we can get actually what we want. We want to get these tax rates, but it, because we're using async, or you could be using promises and then and all that, um, we're able to do this and so that this gets loaded later instead of earlier in our project. Now, in this example, this is silly to do, but it does represent an example. But because we've made this async, we're going to need to deal with async over here as well. So we have that calculate total, but we're going to need to wait on it now. And that means making our lambda async as well. And so with all that in place, we can see that if we run it, it's just going to work, right? It's just running through the whole project. And the fact that the first time this gets hit 
this tax rate's being loaded. And every other time, this import is just going to return the already loaded. This isn't going to repeat the loading of it over and over and over again. It knows better that once it's loaded one import that you don't have to do it a bunch of times. So these are a few of the things I learned while producing my course for Pluralsight on JavaScript modules. I hope some of these may have helped you in uh, different things you might not know about how the module systems actually work in ECMAScript. In my course, I cover both CommonJS as well as ECMAScript, uh, as well as in Node and on the web. So I think you find the course quite interesting. If you want to watch the course, there's a link down in the show notes. And I would love a like and subscribe. It helps us build the channel and helps other people learn about the channel. If this is your first time here, you should look around. I've got a lot of videos on a lot of things .NET and web and JavaScript related. Hopefully you'll find something new to learn. Again, this is Sean Wildemuth for Coding Shorts. Thanks for coming.